Many thanks for the urology trainees all over the world joining us in this uh, YouTube channel to discuss various scenarios for urology exit exam. Today as a continuation we are discussing the rare scenarios possible in the urology exams. Based upon your country the scenarios what we discuss could be rare or could be quite usual but uh, from United Kingdom point of view these are relatively rare so we just want to cover them also in the next um, 40 to 60 minutes okay we are starting with the first scenario yes please thanks for allowing us to record it will be very handy for your own future revision and also for the other trainees who are not online today you had a patient referred from gynecology department the predominant symptom is she is leaking urine through vagina how are you going to evaluate her okay and is the patient having any recent surgery yes she had history of total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral oophorectomy for cervical cancer six weeks back and the leak per vagina started two weeks after the surgery okay so i will uh... Um, the patient, I assume that the patient is coming to the clinic. So I, I will review the patient in the uh, clinic. I will take a brief history, do examination in the presence of chaperone and arrange some investigation. Uh, my concern is a possibility of a vaginal fistula or urethrovaginal uh, fistula following her um, uh, surgery for cancer. So I'll take a history from the patient asking about her baseline um, urological history, is there any difficulty in passing urine previously, any form of incontinence before the uh, surgery, um, whether the patient had before any previous surgery or radiotherapy, about her uh, medical background, the use of any medication, about uh, smoking, uh, drinking uh, habit, and um, also about her um, um, uh, social life and then after I will take the uh, history from the surgery onward uh, when the leak was started what is the severity of the leak um, how many pads she used daily apart from the leak is she having incontinence with the leak as well any visible hematuria any urinary tract uh, infection um, uh, the impact of uh, this leak on her social and sexual life and then I will proceed to um, uh, examination of the patient in the presence of chaperone with the patient concept, uh, starting by general examination, then uh, ab uh, abdominal examination, looking for any uh, palpable mass or tenderness in the loin, any palpable mass or tenderness in the suprapubic area. Then I will examine the perineum in the supine and the left lateral position, looking for any obvious abnormality like uterine diverticulum, um, uh, prolapse, uh, cystocele, rectocele. I will ask a patient to cough to see whether there is any leak. I will see if there is any visible uh, spontaneous leak uh, of uh, fluid or, or pooling of the fluid in the vagina. And then I will examine the patient with the help of Simpson speculum for further inspection. And uh, after that, uh, um, I will uh, try to uh, check the operative note for the patient to see what, what if there is any difficulty during the surgery. Uh, at that time, uh, any recognized uh, injury during the procedure, uh, what was the histology, the MDT decision, whether the patient is waiting to have a further treatment in form of radiotherapy or not. Um, I will ask the patient uh, also to uh, provide a urine sample for <clears throat> for uh, urine dipstick, and uh, I will send for cultural sensitivity if there is a, a suspicion of infection. I will arrange for a baseline uh, full blood count kidney uh, function. I will send um, uh, some of this fluid if the patient uh, able to collect it. I will send the sample for estimation of uh, creatinine in the fluid and compare it with the serum creatinine and take it from there. Good. Again, very extensive, nice, comprehensive answer. Um, I'm going to raise a concern, but unfortunately, I don't have a proper answer or solution to that. In the exams, just look into the examiner's face and see how happy they are. Uh, if mm. they feel a bit apprehensive on you having such a open, big opening gambit try to cut short without losing the main things like looking into operative notes arranging upper track investigations and as you said comparing the 
urine from the vagina and the serum urine serum creatinine so just make the main points uh, because sometimes you will lose the precious time you can't discuss the scenario completely in 10 minutes but on uh, yeah. a, a good day this is absolutely fine but just keep that in the background that uh, a good opening gamete will give you a big 6 from the 6 you need to progress to 8 that's the main idea of the exam okay yes very good so just to answer some of your questions uh, she had a quite a difficult uh, surgery because of uh, the nature of the cancer in the cervix uh, no signs of any involvement of ureter during the surgery the surgeon haven't had any clue that there is a possibility of uh, injury to the bladder or ureter and uh, she's got continuous urine leak and um, the urine sample drained from the vagina did confirmed to be of urine as per the investigations as you said in comparison with the serum parameters and um, she had past history of three normal deliveries she is not medically having any diseases otherwise rest of the investigations were pretty normal she's quite healthy she's quite annoyed by this nuisance of urine leak which made her to wear con incontinence pads uh, continuously um, how are you going to take this further so after that i want to arrange for um, imaging to see uh, the source of the uh, fistula with the urinary tract. So I will arrange for the uh, patient to have a, a, a CT urogram uh, with a delay phase and a, a CT cystoscopy uh, as well uh, to see the site of the fistula and the location and other factors. Okay, her CT urogram showed uh, bilateral normal draining kidneys with no evidence of any hydroureter nephrosis. The contrast reaching the bladder comfortably, unfortunately there is a vesico-vaginal fistula resulting in the contrast leaking into the vagina. No signs of any abnormalities noted in the bladder, rest of the abdominal contents including intestines were normal. Okay, so um, in this case since the um, uh, clinical investigation um, uh, supporting the uh, possibility of vesico-vaginal uh, fistula, then I will have a, a chat with the uh, patient uh, about uh, the best way to uh, repair this. Um, since the patient is with me in the clinic, I will arrange uh, to have a flexible cystoscopy, which will give me an idea whether um, uh, the uh, fistula will be visible, the size of the fistula, uh, the location in the uh, bladder, which may be helpful in planning the treatment. I will explain to the patient since she had a recent, re relatively recent um, cancer surgery, it's not advisable to do um, uh, uh, a repair in short time, so I will allow um, the time for everything to settle. I explain to the patient that I totally understand it is quite inconvenient to have uh, this leak for further a few weeks. I will support the patient um, uh, with some uh, continence uh, appliance. I will involve a continence nurse uh, in the discussion. She will give her written information and contact details if she needs uh, any further support. And uh, my plan is to arrange for the patient to have a, a repair of the um, fistula in about three months from the initial surgery. Okay, your flexible stroscopy shows that uh, her uh, fistula is just above the interureteric bridge, just above the trigone. Rest of the bladder wall seems to be normal. There is uh, no signs of any suspicious lesion. Good bladder capacity. And uh, the fistula is a definite finding. No evidence of any suspicious around the fistula. Just by visual appearance, it appears like 5 to 10 millimeters and um, it is corresponding to a small dimple in the anterior wall of the vagina also during the flexible cystoscopy. And why do you want to wait any further? She is now six weeks from post-op. She's quite tormented by this urine leak. Uh, the idea is that if we do the surgery early, the tissue in this area will be um, cemented and vascularity of the tissue is not optimal. So the rate of success of the fistula may be lower. So I would prefer to allow at least 10 to 12 weeks after the initial surgery, uh, and then we can do the uh, uh, fistulectomy. Okay. So is there any role for early repair? Say, for example, if the patient presented within such a such a date, you will do early repair. Is there any role? 
Uh, yeah, if the if the injury or the fistula was diagnosed very early, usually within one to two, uh, one week to ten days uh, following the injury, um, then there may be an, uh, a rule for early repair. But uh, if it is after two two weeks, it's better to give a, a time for the tissue to heal completely and then consider repair. Good. So it's mainly like we don't want the chronic inflammation to sit in. It's nice to operate in the early sitting, maybe in the presence of acute inflammation. But after 10 days, once the chronic inflammation sits in, you need to really wait for the tissues to regain its um, strength. And so what is the actual duration you wish to wait from the date of surgery? Uh, it's something between 10 to 12 uh, weeks. Okay, some people even um, go for a complete three months, as you said, 12 weeks. But 10 to 12 weeks means it's, uh, yeah, two and a half months, three months is good. You can say three months in the exam, which is much more standard. Okay, so what are you going to do? You are supporting her with the continent service and then you are seeing her in three months time. What's your plan? So my plan is uh, to arrange for the patient to have a, a, a transvaginal repair of the uh, fistula. Um, I am aware of that. Uh, we have two, mainly two uh, approach to repair the fistula, either transabdominal or transvaginal. Both of them, they have the same success rate. Uh, however, uh, the uh, rate of complication uh, is more with the transabdominal. Uh, the length of stay in hospital, need for catheter are, are more, uh, all of them are more with the transabdominal. Therefore, my plan is to arrange for a transvaginal uh, repair uh, with possible use of uh, marcius. Uh, fat pad uh, graft. What other conditions will help you to choose either transabdominal or transvaginal approach? Is the location of fistula makes any impact on that? Yes, the factors include the location of the fistula, the size of the uh, fistula, the experience of the surgeon, the presence of uh, any associated uh, uh, abnormality like in the vagina or in the abdomen uh, all will will help uh, to decide okay take me through the happenings on the surgery date so the patient will be admitted on the uh, day of the surgery um, um, she will be anesthetized uh, prepped uh, who checklist uh, prophylactic antibiotic uh, and then um, after that uh, we will do a um, a cystoscopy, identify the site of the uh, fistula and try to put a, a stent through the um, uh, fistula. Uh, and then uh, after that, transvaginally identify uh, the site of the fistula in the vagina as well. Uh, excision of the fistula tract, which will be sent for histology to exclude any uh, cancer. And then after that, uh, we will do a multi-layer uh, repair of the bladder separated from the vagina. It should be tension-free, watertight, multi-layer repair. I will try to avoid any overlapping of the suture uh, line. I will try to uh, keep a tissue interposition in between the vagina and the bladder. Therefore, I will use the Marcia's uh, fat pad. And then I will um, uh, keep a catheter uh, in the uh, bladder for at least uh, two weeks. And then I remove it after um, um, a cystogram confirming uh, no leak. Um, I will keep the patient on a prophylactic antibiotic. I will advise the patient to avoid any six winter course for at least uh, uh, six weeks uh, following that. Okay, take me through the Martius flap. What is the types or blood supply and how are you going to harvest it? So usually it is uh, the marshes, um, it's taken from the uh, labia. It is an epileptical um, uh, uh, flap of a skin with the underlying uh, fat pad. Uh, it, if it is taken from the upper part of the labia, then it will be relying on the um, external uh, pudendal nerve if it is taken from the lower part uh, it is will be relying on the uh, internal pudendal uh, sorry artery if it is taken from the upper part uh, external pudendal artery from the lower part um, internal pudendal uh, artery um, um, I will take this uh, uh, flap and then uh, rotate it to um, suture it in between the uh, bladder and the vagina to reduce the uh, chance of recurrence of the fistula. And I will inform the patient about the possibility of uh, prosthesia and diminished sensation in the area of the uh, uh, graft. Okay. 
um, take me through the sutra material which you are going to use and what type of catheter you are going to place. So I will use an unabsorbable uh, suture. So for the closure of the bladder, I will use a two of vicryl, a two layer repair. And for the vagina, I will use the same suture and I will leave a, a 14 a French uh, urethral catheter at the end. Okay. What is the difference if you are approaching this uh, fistula transabdominally? Uh, the main difference is that I will do I will use the momentum um, for interposition between the vagina and the bladder. Okay, happy to have another scenario.